Okay, seeing that uh, Tom reads a few minutes late, I will start off the meeting by calling it to order at uh, 702. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of minutes from January 13, 2020. Make a motion. Motion to the second. Second. Discussion, comments, changes. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, uh, audience citizens, we have anybody from the public who would like to speak with us? Say none. We'll move to the uh, police locker room facilities. Should I have uh, Brian go? Or do you want to start? This? Brian, yeah. Brian, why don't you uh, make yourself off mute? You can uh, go ahead. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'm here to report on a couple of things that you asked me to look at. At the since the last meeting, I was able to get some documents to Mike this afternoon on what I was what I have prepared. I also I don't know if I have the ability to share my screen or not. Give it a shot, Brian. Because we don't know. <laughs> I think we can from your side. We're just stalling that way. So I think we can share, share your screen. Here's Zoom, right? Okay. Here's my view. Right here, share screen. Okay. Share. 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 Yeah. Try that, try that. There. Okay. All right. So I'll start with the floor plan. Uh, the floor plan has not changed, but what you asked me to do is look at a potential phasing option for the plan. So what I've done is I've identified in color uh, three primary phases and then the last item would be items that can be completed in any phase. So we really have to break this down into a sequence of operations to make sure that the PD are still operational. So in order to do that, the phase one is estimated to be about six months and it's in red. Obviously it's the area of the Board of Ed storage. That would be the first thing to get renovated. Before that can it happen, we've estimated four to five months for design and one to two months for bidding. So anywhere from five to seven months would occur before you even can get to phase one. And for phase one, we estimated six months. So there's anywhere from a year duration to get to the end of phase one. Phase two was in the blue. So once the police department can occupy phase one, the areas in blue can then get renovated. Uh, it has to go into a third phase. The second phase, the blue phase, was estimated to be about four months. And then the phase three is the area off the lobby for the vestibule, the training classroom, and the area of the executive, the administrative executive. This has to be a third phase because the detective bureau can't move until phase two is completed. And then the detective bureau can move into areas that are blue. And that was the primary reason for a phase three. It's a short duration, two months, but and it's only those areas shown in, in purple. Now the areas in green are any phase. I call it, we can incorporate those into any phase. It doesn't really have to be phase four. Uh, however funding permits, it could be part of phase one, phase two, or phase three. It really isn't dependent on anything the police department are doing currently. Uh, so it really is not tied to any specific phase. Uh, just insert it wherever you want to insert it. If you insert it within any of the phase one, two, and three, it really shouldn't 
extend the duration of those phases too much because a lot of the prep work would be done and we they would be performing things concurrently with the other renovations. So it's not really extending durations. It's just inserting it to multi do multiple things within a certain phase. Can we talk about running electric out there, Brian, for charging stations? Yes, there's electric for charging. There's also electric for lighting. There'd be in the carports, I'm assuming, yes. There would be so lighting portion. and recharge. So some, some portion of it would have to take place when we're cutting up slabs and getting things done, right, in phase one. The only area we're cutting slabs in phase one would be at the area of the staging, which would be outside on the south side of the building. We're really not impacting anything in the area of the carports at, in any of the phasing. We're really doing this lower construction area for the for construction access and construction staging. Where are we pulling power from, Brian? For a carport. For the carport, we'd be pulling power from existing panels uh, within the building. Then we'd have to get them out. Once you do the excavation for the footings and foundations, we can excavate for power. So run overhead in the in the building and then just overhead stop. drop down and then you'd have to trench out to the carport locations. But we have electrical in the mechanical space adjacent. Where is the uh, Brian? Where's the mechanical space um, on the lower level? It's good. it's within the lower left. If you can see my cursor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right here. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Also, it's pretty. It's, uh, pretty close. It, it's this area right here. Is all your mechanical electrical. Brian, just for, just for the, the the cost of phasing, let's say, and looking at the dollars in the phasing, is there any way we could take like phase one and break that into phase one B? And really, what I'm talking about is so much money per year. Well, I think that was the other thing you asked me to look at. And let me see if I can give you a new share. Uh, or else I can come off of this one. Did, you, did the screen switch to the worksheet now? Yeah, that's yeah. it. So the, the project cost worksheet has not changed in its total price. What we've done is we've added the columns in color and the color corresponds to the color that's on the plan for the phasing. Yep. It's kind of a Garanimal sort of uh, approach here with matching colors to phases, so. I got, I got it, it's a yeah. good job. Good phase job. one, phase one, if you're just looking at phase one, it includes most of the design work, anything that has to be done uh, during the design work, work that has to get it out to bid, and then the cost of construction. And I'll tell you guys, this is getting harder and harder to predict on any sort of certainty. So we are looking at phase one, actually doing some pre-work to get ready for phase two and phase three also. So if you're gonna do this in phases and try to shorten the durations of phase two and phase three, they will probably be pre-purchasing items in phase one that could be utilized in phase two or phase three. They won't be impacting the space, but they might be buying light fixtures, buying equipment, setting mechanicals, uh, doing things in phase one to prep for phase two and three. So it does load up phase one. And we're seeing that phase as 3.7 all in with soft costs and contingency. Phase yep. two is the First part of renovating existing, it's about a million dollars in round numbers there. And phase three being the area of the training classroom is about 167,000. The, the things that you can put in any phase is about 275,750. That's the car, majority of that is the carports. So, Excuse me, you've got the site work and the carport structures shown in phase one. Granted, it's only 67,000. But is that does that is that married to phase one or could that be put in phase three? 
Well, under the site work in carports, 66,880 is in phase one. Yeah, and I understand so that. But if it's carport, I mean, so what's happening for that there if we've got other work happening in phase three for the carports or the any phase? The 66,8 is regrading at the back parking area. It's getting sanitary out to your sanitary lines. It has nothing to do with carports, but it's the south area. Okay, so it's the site work for the drainage in that yeah. in that new phase one. I mean, it's Correct. the utility under under slab utility work. Correct, which has to be done for the yeah. For no, understood. The, Just the the way that it's site work and carport structures, it it seems like it could move from phase one. That's all. Yeah, it, it's really not related to the carport at all. The carport was the two hundred thousand. Yep. No, I got that in the, in the last right. phase. Thank you. Brian, Brian, all we're looking to do really is just break it out over three years. So, and again, naturally, the phase one may fall into two years anyways. By the time you finish the design, we get the bid and award out and, and get it moving. So it may naturally just go into two years anyway. So I believe it will because yeah. you're going to have that six to eight months for design and then six months for uh, construction. And we're not going to start this on July 1. Um, so, so that being said, I mean, could you go back to this, the, the plan and, you know, is there anything in the plan that could be, I mean, you know, not completed in phase one and held off until phase three or well, phase two for that matter? It's all the area in red. So I guess. No, I understand that. You, ha you have to then tell us what, what's not going to get done. Could you zoom in on the red area? I can't read yeah. it from, yep. Yep. from yep. here. Let me. Uh... Sally ports. I mean, what are the Sally ports right now? The where the green area is? The south it's the area in blue, which is over bulk storage, is the current Sally port. Uh, if you take into account any temporary relocation, I don't see you got relocation in your budget, but anything like when you do phase two, you're going to have to move those, a lot of those spaces. Have you figured any kind of temporary relocation in this? There is in the project worksheet some relocation and moving expenses, and I've allocated that across the phases. There's $7,500 in phase one, there's $1,500 in phase two, and there's $1,000 in phase three. Um, how big is the Sally Port piece of the, of the, of the puzzle? Dollar-wise, uh, roughly. As far as dollars? Uh, yeah, roughly dollars, yes. I think the largest dollar amount in the Sally Port would be the mechanicals. Because <clears throat> what have... I'm, I'm just, you know, just looking at it in the context of the Sally Ports, yes, I recognize they have to be available for before the bulk storage gets taken over. But if it's possible to shift the Sally Ports to at least the you know the the fit out the interior work to phase two and then shift the bulk storage to phase three. I don't. I'm just just asking, understanding that the, you want to do the majority of the work in phase one for all of the fit outs, the locker rooms, all that together, all the sub slab work. I'm just wondering if there's any piece that you could that's kind of you know not completely married to the rest of the phase one, the locker rooms, the physical training, all the other um, handling rooms. Just a thought. I'm just, I'm a permutation guy, so I figure out things. In that first phase, Brian, you've got like fully equipping the training room, right? Well, not the equipment though. Uh, equipment is typically through the PBA. Uh, I don't know if the town actually buys that equipment. It's, fitting it out would be fitting it out for finishes and ceilings and lights and mechanicals. That's the fitting out we do, uh, but not fitting it out for fitness equipment. I mean, it certainly looks like the majority of phase one has to stay together. Um, it wouldn't make any sense to break it out. The only question, like I said, is is whether or not there's any opportunity to to shift the Sally Port part, shift it a little bit to so we can, you know, minimize the first bump, the the three plus million, and a little bit to the next year, and and you know, the, the second year to the third. Just a thought. I'll shut up now. 
Well, I think at a minimum, you're still going to be doing a slab and you're still going to be doing the perimeter walls and the sally port. You're still going to be doing the overhead doors. Just access the so, just the work. Yeah. It'll be the last area to be finished. No matter what, we'll figure out. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's something that even, I mean, depending on if you need those doors for the, the the fit out for all of phase one, I mean, as long as there's the interior dividing wall, it's something that it could be done later. Um, but again, if you need it to do the fit out for the phase one stuff, obviously you got to start making the openings and all that. All right. <laughs> I know where to sit. Send them to the back of the room. Tom, you know what? The town, right. is, the town is putting bond requests into the legislators for this year. So, in subsequent years, um, you could put that into the request. Right. You know, so. There might be a way to fund it without actually bonding. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We have to do it. No. Yeah, I don't think so either. No. Board of Finance would want to until whatever that level is. is okay. Anything else to fill us in there, Brian? Well, the durations have been stated. I think anything you do to extend the durations will only increase the cost. Uh, we've been getting a lot of notices almost on a daily basis about price increases, escalation. Uh, it's, it's hard to predict. But what has been consistent in all of the messaging that we've been getting is if any of our clients are considering delaying their projects to try to save money, that's a false premise. Um, we're not looking to save money. We're looking to make it a viable project with the bonding issues the town has. That's the only thing we're looking at, Brian. Yeah, I know time is not in our favor right now or, or in the town's favor with any of this. Uh, so any extension of this into different years further out uh, will ultimately change these numbers. I don't think the numbers will hold if you want to go out another year in the duration. We just might have to make adjustments to what, what the numbers are. You guys have more questions for Brian? Um, I do actually, it's more for the group. So we were intending on going to the town council with this. I asked Brian what his preference was on dates and the earliest would be March 1st. So um, trying to figure out, do we still, do you want to go forward with this phasing shown in the budget numbers in the plan? Yeah, I think I think the, the, what we have to explain a little further is that phase one, although it's, it's a scope of work, let's say, in phase one, it may be broken out over two, two years. Two fiscal years. Right. right. So if we split and, that. And that, that's what needs to be known because I think the phase uh, two and three in any phase, we can make those work right. down the road. It's just a matter of how we're going to define phase one to break that out over two years. Right. So it's two fiscal years, you're right. Right. It's, it's not two separate Right, so that's if because uh, I'm going to do the agenda item right up. There's usually a narrative that goes into the town council. It's like a briefing package they get. So along with whatever Brian wants, I, I guess it would be in a plan. Um, probably just this phasing. Uh, I would leave it just as that. Yeah. And then in your narrative, I would just say based on the bid and award time frames that it, it cover two fiscal years right. for phase one, and you can list that. What's a fiscal year? Well, like, it's July 1st to June 30th. So, July 1st. So, it's mid year. So, it's really, calendar year. So, that, that kind of works. It would work because it's right in, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, as long as it's inside anyway. Designing, we're going to be in September, right. October. Right. And then, bidding, and then getting contracts out will be right in the first of the year. Right. Now, the timing should work. Yeah. If they approve it, they may say, Say yes. Especially we can show it over that time frame and the dollar amounts. Right. I think, I think we can make it work. Yeah. So well, well, we have to wait that long. To Ryan's point. The cost is. It is what it is. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. We don't know what the cost is until we get the bid. No, I know. I know. You know. This is all projected. So we just have to, when you're talking to the town council, just let them know that 
Basing's all well and good, but it's gonna be. Yeah. So then is there a request to the town council in this is it just a presentation? I would I would make it as a presentation. There was a statement in the issue for the police station. Right. This is the response to the statement in the and here are the numbers. Right. So here's, yeah, here's a wag. Here's what we see it broken out. <laughs> <laughs> I call it rock. I call it rock of the way. Okay, so this is for discussion only, and then it, I guess the town council at that point and the finance department have to figure out how to uh, fund it, and we can help with the scheduling. And, um, yeah, I mean, look, just make sure that they understand it. It's phase one, phase two, and three. Exactly. And and the police department has almost like I said about they have nine hundred and change, so they can start with the more detailed design work, and then set the bid package up with funds already in place. So maybe that could be put in there. You can bring it down this way. That Brian will finish the design. It's going to cost X. Put it out to bid. Bid reward process is going to cost Y. And then once we get the final numbers in, they'll have the final decision. Whether they want to do it or not. Okay. Brian build out for some of his work this, this fiscal year. Yeah. Chop 200 Oh, yeah. So, so that would be a subsequent ask from the town council to get the detailed design going. I would, I would yeah. say we, we have to do that sooner than that. You know, let's get those hard numbers in. Get the hard numbers in. And when we put it out the bid, we'll, we'll list the phasing in there. We'll receive the duration. Right. So when they bid it to us, the bid is the way we want. Right. Not going okay. back later. And just so um, what I'll do is I'll draft the agenda item. I'll talk. To, I'll run it by Brian, and then I'll run it by this group to make yeah. sure it sort of uh, has everything that you know discussed here. Okay. Yeah, Brian, does that make sense to you? What we just said. Yes, it does. Uh, there is a design effort just to get it design engineered and out to bid. We can actually break that number out. It's within phase one, but uh, we could break it out even further. We'll call that. We'll, we'll call that pre precon. Correct. Pre be in the phasing, let's call it. So break it out as a number, number, good idea. Yep. I'll add another column. Sounds good. So this is for March 1st. Yes. So we have to get the agenda item ready by next <laughs> next week. <laughs> well, it's going to be a week in, in a, like a week earlier. Monday noon. Yeah, Monday noon. Exactly. Or 11. Thank you, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Brian. We'll be talking and emailing and all kinds of stuff. Very good. And we'll be there on March 1st to uh, assist. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Brian. Brian. Thank you. Join us. Let's see how that goes. Senior Center. Uh, Right back up. No, Tom. Tom Salamino, I think, yeah, is, uh, yeah, is leading us. Well, he it's went to the. He, actually, Tom, why don't you explain what you did? I sat on my office at work and I listened, <laughs> and I let Tom Akari do most of the talking. Smart. The only time that I spoke up is when there was what I would perceive to be um, questions that you know. Um, I won't say baiting questions. That might be a little strong. Um, when I wanted to add a little um, more background to it than just the cut and dry architectural piece that Tom was adding. But no, I thought it went very well. Um, I think there were, and I think, you know, Bart, I'm sure has heard, you know, similarly, uh, <laughs> hopefully same. But, um, you know, there were some questions. I mean, I'm going to say um, trying to identify all the nickels to carve out of the project. There was some thought of some conversation about uh, the extra drive out to lower lane. Um, oh, do we own the property? Do we not? You know, added cost. And I think, you know, good, good perspective. But I think it's a minor piece of the overall puzzle. Um, quite frankly, it's to me, it's a question of is the community going to come together behind whatever it is that they think they want to do? And I say it that way in the context of, it sounds like um, want to cut, cut, cut. And really there's three pieces to the project. There's the 
the building, you know, meeting spaces and all that. There's the gym and then there's the pool. Okay, what do you want? Pick one out of the three, pick all three. Uh, it, it was interesting. Maybe we just don't fill up the pool right away. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if you want to, if you want to look at it in the context of, you know, what don't we have? We don't have a pool. So you can, you know, you can find gym space, even though it might be tight. You can find building space and room space, but we don't have a pool. So fine, put a pool in all by itself. And it's probably going to be outdoors on top of that, but. So hey, that's uh, yeah, um, you do had a bunch of questions about why they were, um, you know, focusing in on the site selection. So did that come up? We, and uh, what was the what we, was the we, we went through that and Tom went through that and, and I it, it sounded as if um, they really weren't in tune to what has happened. Um, or they wanted to make sure they revisited every square inch of the of what's already been covered. Right. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but it seemed like they really wanted to make sure they understood where everything was coming from and okay. why we were where we are. Do, do they understand that uh, really the, at some point there have to be a revision to the statement of need if they want to bring the price down? We can't do that. Do they understand that public, public building is not responsible for that? Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know if they. I don't know if they understand w whether or not we're responsible for it. I really think they are definitely struggling with what it is that they think that we, they, we being the town, they being the group, what the town wants for this structure. Um, and that's why I, I made the joke about the three pieces. What part do you want, or do you want all three? And and uh, it will be interesting as we progress. So we need to do more public outreach for me or the Well, that, that's not our purview, I don't think. I mean, I think, it, it, you know, that's where that is that group's purview. It's a matter of the group and the town deciding what it is that the town wants. And I say we the town as opposed to we the, the PBC. I think it still comes down to what the town wants and then can move in whatever direction the town wants. I didn't phrase that appropriately. Do you think they're going to get do more public outreach? I don't know. I, I think they have to. I, I mean, I, I think they will, and I know they will, um, because I think there were some questions about the ability to use the grant funding for, you know, anything from, you know, lobbying to public outreach to whatever. So yeah, it's, you know, fundraising. to yeah. fundraising, yes. It's de minimis compared to the cost, so I don't think it's done five seconds. So that, that grant is not for the building itself. Right. All the okay. yeah. And did you guys see Kevin Delaney's email on the remaining yeah. funds? Yeah. I was actually surprised that you could use it for fundraising, but uh, to me that was a pleasant surprise. So that council, that advisory committee could use that for researching funding, public outreach, and even you know exploring different funding options. Who has that fund right now? Uh, we do. Oh. Well, it's in an account in the finance department. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they would have I don't see it here. <laughs> we're not going so to pay bills for the yeah. Oh, I got you. Right. Yeah, so the right. POs would be issued through their committee. So they would have, right. they would have and that's up. probably the right way to do it. Yeah. They'd have to come up with their budget, submit it to the council, right. and then it'd be paid out of that. It would, it would not come back to this committee. Right, no. Process our, our work on this, so, other than, well, other than if we tell Tom and right. Carrie to do anything else, right? Let's say they revise the statement and you get it back to us, then we read right. Tom after we revise the drawings, right? We do the budget and get the budget back. Well, the other yeah. thing is, is that if they're going to start fundraising and want Tom to continue to spearhead the comic, he's going to need, he's, oh, he's going to need some money, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, and I can see that he's, happening. He's gonna, I don't think we want a whole lot of money. He wants the job. <laughs> but this would be almost like another task. No, it is. Yeah. It's, it's above and beyond. Oh, yeah. The services that we're Absolutely. selling are. Yeah. I agree. Sure. Good point about how it gets processed and maybe the, the work you're doing. Yeah, we don't want any part of that. that. No, we do not want any part of that. Well, it really is yeah, there. Yeah, for yeah, me. It's like yeah. the whole. Right yeah. So and there's a lot of money left. There's four hundred. What is it? Four hundred five thousand yeah, dollars left in the grant, and that doesn't even include the going to the design build. So Tom O'Carry's 
money for even going to the referendum or pass a referendum is there. Well, what we should what we should talk about here for this committee is, you know, of that four hundred some odd thousand, how much should we be seeing for let's say uh, redesign? Right. You know. Well, it says there's seventy thousand dollars for consulting. I'm not sure what kind of consulting the committee would need. But we have engineering architecture, 175,000 available in 405. And so you're seeing Tom's PO is not included in this 405? Exactly, yeah. So there's 175 in here. So I, I just think that we need to put some money aside. Like no, I got, if they revise yeah. the statement of need, and send it back. Yeah, we'll we need, we need money to, to, to get that right. revised get statement of need to execute. Yeah. Yeah. Probably need 100 grand. At least. I would pay. So, so I think right now we should we should put into that. Let's be, be the first one. Go back to the the town, take a vote on how much we should put aside for future as a contingency. As a we design. Yeah, word it properly, contingent. Because who knows when this is going to come back? A, you know, Bart's point is well taken. They're, they're sounds like they're going back to the beginning, right? Like, do we really need this? Do we need this? Do we need this? Yeah. Or uh, financing. So this may, you know, they. Ordered an F thirty five jet fighter, may come back as assessment. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that your points will take it, but it, it's contingent. You know, this thing may never fly. So I guess we'd have to word it based on a revised statement of need. If if a revised statement of need comes, yeah. a possible like revised statement right. of need, right? Okay. Because it's it, it sounds like. All this work that should have right. been done two years ago right. is now getting done. Because you don't want them to see that pot of money sitting out there. So that's one no, it'll look right. like it over something. Right. right. It'll be spent. What, what do we have? What do we left do we owe Tom? I mean, his his uh, contract value, we, we know what that is off the top of our head. Oh, we had an invoice or something. He doesn't have a, Oh, the last invoice? He doesn't have a whole bunch left. No, I want to say it was like 115. Yeah, no, he, he had maxed out. I mean, if you look at all the work yeah, he's done, yeah, he's over. Yeah, I think he's, he's given a lot of stuff to us. I know he has. And no, I wouldn't be surprised if he cost it. Yeah, he, he's done a lot of work. He survived COVID, but he hasn't done the outreach. Yet. He's taking that outreach. Well, he's been putting it towards it. He's, 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 he's done. He's done outreach, but no one showed up. No. Right. Well, yeah, but not as much as we anticipated. I think he's done three or four presentations making both presentations. So, anyways, I, I think we should make a motion okay. to put some money aside. Uh, we don't have to do it tonight. Well, to get so that hours. money is is that is that money even worthy as being in our we we went to the town grant. council for our money, right? For our portion of the grant. All we want to do is ask the town to reserve 100,000 in case there's any redesign. Yeah. yeah, a contingent amount, like Tom said, uh, in reserve for uh, potential revised statement of need and for redesign. Yeah, value looks, engineering. So they got 18,000 left. Yeah. Or not. yeah. yeah. So if we get and it's split between uh, meetings, uh, on site, uh, let's see, schematic design. Estimates. And, what was his total contract value originally? I'm sorry, no, it's, no, it's nine thousand. I'm sorry, nine thousand. Yes. Yeah, so what was his total original contract value? Uh, the whole, the total was three forty five, no, three thirty three, and it was split between pre referendum, which was one seventy four, and design build after for one fifty nine. So, hundred thousand pre referendum, still pre referendum. Yeah. Hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on and I'll I'll work up the agenda yeah, for that. Wordsmith it out with. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next step? With some help after, after the meeting. What what was your opinion of where the next step is going to be? They're going to go back to the committee. The, the, the committee. The committee. The okay. committee. They're supposed to report back to the council. Okay, so they're going to go directly. They're to not the going to come back to us. Right. They're going to go to the council. So my guess would be that if the council finds that there's differences in what they want to pay for. They should be advised. Well, they should go to the council instead of us. They're right. not going to tell them anything. That's right. right. Nothing to tell them. They need to go back to the individual commissions right. and right. revise okay. their sort of statements of need and go through the process. Okay. Which means it won't be on a referendum for November. Because right. they're supposed to have the stuff. Did somebody tell them they had to cut their budget? I mean, what is the. 
What's driving? Are they getting, them? Are they getting they're, nervous? They're themselves? getting nervous on the number. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The time of year. Well, they're, they're, they're rightfully concerned about it goes to the referendum. It's a crazy high number. It's like they feel that's right. But then when we get to like, that point, it's going to escalate. It's, it's going to be less of a project and more money. Every four bathrooms. But aren't they also hopeful they might get outside funding too? Like a part yeah, of well, they, are, they, they are looking for funding from other sources. Like maybe that's what they want that fundraising. Yeah, the, I think so. Did the Y come to this? The Y. Postpone their meeting. I think okay. they're supposed to come in two or three weeks. Okay. The 24th, they have a special meeting. I guess the questions are too pointed for the Y to handle. Kind of off the cuff, so there was some time to show them what they're doing. It's also CCA, the Central Connecticut Athletic Association. They put on a pool, offer it up for tournaments, or maybe you get some. That's my point is if they're going to user fees, don't start waiving user fees because right. somebody knows somebody and somebody knows somebody. Yeah. You know. Well we went through this with Sage Park with the field. Right. Oh, yeah. It was all supposed to be reimbursed through and, and, and it never happened. Everybody comes in there. I don't think they've ever turned out right. a request. They, they ask for a waiver. It's like these memberships. People are gonna come looking for a membership for a for a grab bag or something, and they're gonna give them a free membership for a year. Just because they want to be, they can't do that. They've looked at every model on this. They've looked at the Y model, they've looked at our models, they you know, they've had a team of there, they've had everybody got to decide from both sides from seniors and park and rec. You don't have any bills from town. We don't we don't have any QA and M bills, right? No, he hasn't billed us. Were you no, were you making a motion? No, he's got to write it. Okay. Yeah. He's got to write it. And once he writes, he can send it out electronically. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just make sure we're not going to have time anymore. That's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. Well, that, that, guy, that should come out of their budget. Right. No, no, not for that stuff, for the stuff that we owe time for. Make sure we're all covered for that. I want to pay me more money for, for a while. Sure. No. I don't think we said anything that's up to go for meetings and right. talk on the phone for a while. Yeah, just hold it up. That, uh, all right, let's move on. Next order of business. Now uh, you're in charge. So. <laughs> <laughs> I push it to you to next order of business. Okay, board of ed. School, HVAC. HVAC upgrades. Right. Um, aside from the invoice, um, C CES is preparing 100% level uh, drawings and, and uh, specs for Griswold and Hubbard. We already have the Willard at 100%. So in the last set of drawings and specs I looked at looked at almost 90%. I mean, I'm not a, like I said, I'm not an NEP guy, but uh, they were pretty far along. And when we asked him what he had to do to get him to 100%, it was really internal quality control. So I, I really think we're going to get some dotted eyes and everything else in the, in the package. So I think we're at that level of design. Um, I also sent out a quote request to three estimation firms that I sent you guys a list to share this. Um, so I got some questions back about timing. So, and then I was talking, Doug, Doug, are you on the phone? Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, Doug. So, so Doug and I are Good talking evening, about and we started talking about timing, and um, it looks like I've been getting some emails from the town manager and other folks about ARPA. They looks like they're going to be on the next uh, next um, town council meeting, recommending that Willard School all the ARPA funds go to the Willard School project. Now we don't have a cost estimate yet, but at least you know you have I think five million dollars yep. there. Yep. So with that said, Doug and I were talking today about well, when would Willard start? Like realistically, and I'm looking at the lead times for the HVAC that you were in your term report. I mean, it was like four months. I mean, depending on how complex the equipment. Is. Yeah, you know, well, they're gonna have to get the shop drawings and stuff yeah. anyway. So you're gonna have six to oh yeah weeks of just them getting 
Yeah. Middle stone, and that's stone. that's after you've already got them contracted. The bid came out, went out, and everything else. Right. So, Doug, why don't we talk about the C, the need for a CM or GC? Uh sure. Yep. Uh, do you want do you want to start or just a couple uh, well, questions we I, had? Or? <laughs> we can we can tag team, but uh, I kind of feel like we're because like, we were talking today. I'm like I feel like I'm trying to be a CM sure. and working on, and we're talking about logistics like relocation. We need portable classrooms. And Doug, you more you're more familiar with this than anyone. What else are we not thinking about that you know CM will be saying, you know, in the schedule or the budget are not covered? Sure. Yeah. Just uh, just thinking back to the you know the the McGee and high school projects that everyone was involved with is that is the intent to try to engage with a, a CM or GC prior um, to bidding or once we know kind of the bid package the way it is, do we want somebody to review the plans and specs? coordinate that with the Board of Ed on how we would, you know, displace any students while classrooms under construction. Would we want the contract to be just for the summer months over a, a you know, two calendar year period? Or would we want to write it that second shift work happens during the school year, um, you know, do the bulk of the work one summer, continue through the fall, winter, spring on second shift, and then wrap up the following summer. Um, just the Board of Ed asked that if if we think that potentially we could you know, begin something this summer, whether it be the, the chiller pad, any trenching utilities, uh, prep work, piping, cabling, et cetera, they would not schedule any programs this summer at Willard, um, but they would just need to know, you know, maybe within a month or so, if that's the intent or we think there's a possibility of beginning any construction this summer. So McGee, what did we do McGee and anybody look, that was a one year, that was a summer, and then there was second shift. We wrapped it up. I want to say by Christmas break, they did some of the final things. And between holidays and summer break, it was. I don't think it ran into two years. So my question really is on the financing side. Do, do these qualify under the state for renovations of the schools? And can we get state money for it? And what percentage can we get it at? You great time. Yeah, Explain. Yeah, Mike, do you want to do you want to take that? No, I, I think you're, you're you're all in this, Doug. But I'll help out if I can. Sure. Yeah. What just the timing? What we happen to find out today? Jim Mahoney's been working on several grant possibilities for the town with multiple projects, and what did come up was school construction. And what what we've got in writing today is that currently the legislation has no standalone HVAC projects considered for. Uh, grant projects that would be reimbursed. It would be if we were going to do a, a renovate as new or an addition to one of the elementary schools, the program would qualify. Um, but currently, the way we have it designed as just a standalone HVAC, there is no uh, grant funding available for these projects. And then the other caveat, I'm sorry, the other component is the yeah. is the way the system is designed because of our solar systems. We may not meet the criteria um, with the ASHRAE standards and what the state's looking for uh, for ventilation, et cetera, because we can't really utilize any any roof space. That's what kind of led to the designing of a, a four pipe fan coil unit ventilator to replace the existing DX unit ventilators in the classrooms and then do a, a chiller system. So that would be the other component is the system as designed may not qualify for state reimbursement because of the type of system it is. There's no COVID money out there, Doug, for air quality? That's that's yeah that's what we're waiting to hear too. I mean the ARPA the ARPA fund certainly qualifies you know the criteria. So we could use we can go all in for Willard with the ARPA funds, but then what would we do for the other two schools? Would it be local share or you know the town bonding and doing the project on our own just just with bonding? I, I think I think we really should look into what we could get from the state for the percent reimbursable, and even if we have to modify a couple of things in the design so it qualifies more as a renovation. I know we have some ceilings we changed height on and we did a few other architectural things in there. I don't know if that falls, we get enough of that, like Jim was starting to say, to, to re-qualify it as a you know, renovation project. And then if so, what do we get? Is it 47% or what's the percentages on that? Does the state have a definition? It depends on the school size and the use yeah. of the rooms. They don't give you a percentage until they, they look at the plans. And do they have a definition of what a usable space. reimbursement. No, no, definition of, and I'll make myself clear, of what uh, uh, 
what falls under the category funds that they would reimburse for. Is it our wording, or do they come out and say, well, you know, you really should have knocked that wall down, you should have put in different electrical outlets? Is what it a percentage of the space? The school? So that's do we, well, we we're touching just... the whole school with an HVAC system, right? Yeah, Every classroom is going to be. You just said the way it's designed it may not meet the actual ratings for the that's state. That's what I mean. So we won't get the funding for it. So I think we got to look at this a little more. And I, I think if we're going to do the work, we should do it over summers and not dis disrupt the school with those temporary classrooms and all that stuff. That's, 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 that's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I, I it's know. crazy. And the other thing I was going to say is we there was been talk about closing down an elementary school. How, what, I can't believe that if we know we're going to work in Willard for a year, the classroom student population, you know, instead of having two classes of 12 students in each, maybe, or three, three with 12 students each, maybe it comes up to two classes of a certain grade and 24 each, you know, oversized some classrooms so we have a spare room the way they used to be. Yeah, they used to be. we all went through that stuff. And then they have two teachers and they could co-teach because you know, teachers could cover two, two groups. Uh, I think right now, personally, and the group's got to decide, but I think we, we need to go back to this state, understand what we can get reimbursed for it. I know we have the, the, the COVID money, quote unquote COVID money, but maybe that's, the, and that's a side, let's, let's say, forget that money exists right now. We go back with the design for the three, three schools and find out that the state will reimburse us, let's say 50% even of it, or whatever the number is the state if you feel comfortable on what we need to do to modify those drawings to get the, the reimbursement. Once we understand what that is, then we can break the project out. You get what I mean? Yeah. Over the schools. And until we get the pricing back, we don't even know what those numbers are. But I'm sure right now, why I would like to see a CM involved is probably different from what you'd want it for, is I need them to file the paperwork to really understand that. I don't understand that 100%. The state because I've never done it before than we did it at the high school. Yeah. And we still have two million dollars out in the high school. We haven't received that yet from the state or more. So. Might be through it. Yeah. The other thing though, just thinking out of the box from it, I mean, if we had five million dollars, we've already we've got designs going on in all three schools. How about if we just bought all the mechanical equipment? Well then those are all options we can look at. And then and then we you know buy the mechanical equipment and say that comes to 3.15, 3.75, and buy, you know, whatever else we need, pants, exhaust pants, or whatever, and just set up each school the same way. This is the equipment we're using, period. I think the design was laid out that way, right, Doug? But we don't have to. This the, the design was all the same equipment for all the schools, right? Yeah, well, yeah, very similar system. I mean, the you know the the size of units, BTUs, etc. A few models may change, but it, it, I think if you're referencing a buyout package for somebody, that we would you know buy out all three schools, have all the equipment, and and pay for it, and then you know look to how to fund the the construction portion, etc. You know. Yeah, we need every all, all the equipment fit in all three schools, or one school built a certain way, or is it? Oil they're all plate? they're all built around the same period. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's not it's not an easy job to do out there. But I think if we if, if it was me, I'd just phase it for summer work and try to do it that way. And uh, I think that's the best way to go because we get into rental classrooms, get into relocation, re relocating these kids in the school year, we're gonna open up a harness nest. So we yeah. don't have enough money. Yeah. Now how did I wasn't here when McGee was done? So that was summer and then sec when you say second shift, we're talking after four o'clock, yeah, four yeah, to twelve yeah. or something. Yeah. And how did that work out? And was it the same scope? Well, got all the ventilators or whatever? I one morning, but it was <laughs> but, you you shift. Beginning. but you could do half days so get from one <laughs> and start those <laughs> guys at 12. Right. Oh, so oh. It, 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 you guys I mean, worked in the kit, gym. They didn't use the gym, or they did the auditorium. Right. So it was all. So it was, it was off limits for a while until they were out of there, right? You got to get the okay. principal and on right. the whole thing and yeah. make sure everybody's on the same page. And he, we have Nick, 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 right? And right. he was on board and he said, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Right. Let's okay. get it done. Yeah. I think our next steps are now is finish the design, get it out to an estimating firm. Let's get the numbers let's together. Go. While that's going on, let's talk to the state and see what we can do for reimbursement and if we have to modify the drawings let's say so so it's more of a renovation than just a straight up HVAC swap out 
then let's do that and see what the money is worth in the state. And then the five million we have, we just put that on the sideline. Because let's say we get 40, 47% or even 50%, whatever the number is that we can get out of the state, that reduces the town cost by that much. And it, it makes it more, more palatable, let's say. And if you well, break it out over summers, we're gonna have to do this anyway. Money even longer. Well, my feeling is we're gonna have to do this anyway. Yeah, we assume so much pressure on the town, yeah, the health authorities, and the age of those systems, and all yeah, that COVID crap. We're just gonna break. But I think we're ahead of the curve as a town. Yeah, we started way before anyone else did. Right. So I think we're we're out in front of it. We just got to make sure that we stay yeah. out. But they stay out front. We make sure we get the finances straight out right. Now. Well, with that, I like your idea though, getting a CM on board earlier. Me too. Somebody <laughs> with expertise that can. Let's bring the remember so the design is yeah. so they can file all the paperwork for right. the state. That was right. awesome. Right. And we still, I think we have them installed as a consultant, though, right? Who do we have on board for McGee? I don't remember. <laughs> um, he was uh, 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 New Britain. What was, it? what was the guy's name? Oh, oh, or, uh, GC? What was the guy's I think Who did it? It might, might have been Newfield. Was it Brian? Brian, oh, is he? Brian, can you, can you hear us, Brian? Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm driving, but um, yeah, it, we we were the CA. Uh, you went direct prime to a GC. It actually went to Ferguson um, Electric, who was qualified with the state to actually do general contracting work under ten million. Um, and they handle it themselves as a general contractor with our oversight. But you were involved, Brian. Yes. Yep. Directly involved. Yes. That's yeah, what I yeah. remember. So that's what oh, yeah, I remember. It, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, McGee went, it went well, um, very aggressive in the summers. If you recall that uh, the newer addition in the 90s had a lot of uh, water infiltration and mold. So we tried to get the courtyard done first to alleviate the water. We shot blasted and, and uh, moisture mitigated the floors, and then they re actually reoccupied the space during the school year, um, slightly renovated, um, and then we went, I think it was like four rooms at a time, uh, because you really didn't have any swing space available. Uh, there were not going to be any temporary classrooms or anything, so we just tried to grab four rooms at a time, and when they were, I want to say there were three, maybe three months period, give or take. Uh, to do all of them, and then we just marched right through the school, and we're heavy in the summers. It was it was Benigni, right? That was the principal then. Uh, let me think. Actually, uh, Scott Ratchford was the principal at the time. Okay. Another question for you guys on this scheduling, because the estimators are going to be saying, "Well, when is it?" Because I, I sent out. I, I was being optimistic. I said. For Willard this summer and next summer, right? Two year. Um, if we think it's going to be next summer starting, I can just revise it. Now, the other two schools, you think they could be done in the same construction sequence with the same contractor? Concurrent. Summer and then second shift if you well, had to. I think if we. We're going to march. Yeah, he's just going to march through all, all three schools. Oh, okay. Yeah, as long as we don't fight off too much. Yeah, I don't we know, know that we get done in a year, this is the summer session. Yeah. So, so you guys are saying all three schools concurrently? No. 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 Okay. One and Willard, two, so yeah. Willard first, and then the next two uh, concurrently. Uh, and and, and, and Doug, Doug even thought that was feasible too. Yeah. We talked today because I was like, can they? The can first they... ones you work out the kinks, and the right. second two you just bang yeah. them. Right. Okay. Um, I think it would be better to focus one at a time, even. You know, with going with the remaining two, and if you can fit it in, this two at a time. Right. So, for the purposes right. of the cost estimate, should I assume then uh, three, one, two, three? Yeah. Okay. At and now, Willard, Jimmy, the schedule guru. And when they say any chance of we, starting we can this, we do this both schools in one year. Well, what are we going to save? Right. Yeah. Well, Hubbard's the smallest. I mean, what's the square footage of Griswold versus um, yeah. Willard? I think Griswold's probably the bigger one, right? Yeah, I think the Griswold. So, or well about the same size. So I mean you pick the biggest one and then you stick the smallest one with one of the you know the next small you know the middle oh, one. He, he makes a good point, yeah. Well well it's the one set up to go. Right. So yeah, pretty much is, yeah. That's, that was the one that had the most flaws. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's going back again. For estimating? When does Willard start? For the estimator's purpose. Do you oh, want to be go conservative and say next summer and not this summer? Yeah, okay. Not this summer. All right. this and then the other two assume like one year and one year. One, yep. And then the cost estimates will be conservative. Okay. okay. And that's the work in the building, so they can always order. Right. Well, and right, it it right. Outside. And that could be worked out. Right. right now, with a CM, like, and I guess Brian's on the phone, is that what a CM would be managing? Like, okay, we can pre the town you want to pre order for the next two schools, yep. find a place to st stick the chiller and all the unit ventilators and whatever other long lean items there are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so on the CNN, what do you want me to do? You probably need to get up an RFP. RFP or RFQ? Request for proposal. Yeah. RFP, okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to need some help with this. <laughs> Wait, yeah. is there a model for uh, uh, yeah. something I can uh, adapt? Right. McGee. McGee. Yeah. McGee is the model. Okay. You can check with the high school too. In terms of language, but. McGee would be high school's more current. Yeah. Right. So actually, yeah, check that. Out. Use McGee as the basic structure. Make right. sure the new so stuff is all in high, high school. Okay. And now, now it'll probably be changed also. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling better about this because this. I, we're, Doug and I are talking. I'm like, I'm not a CM. <laughs> you know, this is you know, this is this is what they do. You're a car wash guy. Yeah. And I think right now things are starting to move because the town council wants to move on Willard quickly. But do they understand it's like four or five months before you get a chiller? And I don't know about the unit ventilators um, and the cost to uh, There's a lot more. Are so, you guys upgrading the service to handle the chillers or is that a problem? One of the schools required an electric upgrade, I think. We talked, Eric talked about that. Well, I think it was either Griswold or Hubbard. Yeah, one of them, yeah they had to actually um, bring someone in and go through it and there was no Yeah. Yeah. So they did. Uh, but the one at Willard is? I, I think so. Sure. I mean, they went through the engineering firm went yeah, through that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure was yeah. Well, Willard was upgraded with a put the addition on, probably. Yeah, I don't oh, think it was no, Willard. I think it was one of the Griswold, the Hus right. Griswold or Hubbard. Right. Right. They had to it. Come on, this is high energy efficiency. It's lowering the heat. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you're putting a chiller on. <laughs> That's kind of like a, let's not like an air small little air conditioner. Maybe you should reduce the Windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is the RFP before the estimator? I'm gonna do. All, don't worry about that. I'll 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 get going. No, the estimator. Um, uh, uh, honestly, she's she's got a point. It may make more sense to put it off. They don't get the actual numbers. Not waste a lot of time with that. Then we make decisions based on actuals. Okay. You know what I mean? So money well, you don't have the architecturals for uh, yeah, Griswold and, all and that's another know. reason why no. Doug and I were concerned. It's the gaps that you have. Um, you have civil and the MEP for Willard, and then you don't have civil. We asked, for, site. We asked them for a quote, though, right? Well, Friar did Willard. Yeah, yeah, we have we have quotes for both the other two schools. So. Well, what are they reasonable? Yeah, they were like seven grand, somewhere in the five to seven grand. Uh, oh no, they no 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 no. They were more because they already had them for Willard, so they could just update them. So for Gris, so they is it kind of go on the same basis. C A come before C M. A C A come before C M. <laughs> Question. Gotcha. Not sure what you're asking. Is how to put it on the notes? Minutes. Oh. No, well, construction administrator or construction manager. Construction manager. Right. You and you bring a manager on before it'd be one or you the get other. the administrator. Be the other, one or the other. Yeah. What's left on the design? I thought we were pretty much home. Yeah. What? I think there's gaps though in the interior repair work, and um, I know for some of the asbestos stuff, um, I, I sent that information to them, and they, I, I'm sure the cost estimators can, you know, yeah. put an allowance or say, oh, if it's if it's co joint compound or something. I don't think it is. I think it's some tile and yeah. some other stuff. So my only thought is, if we are going to go, if we're going to hire a CM and go out to bid with it, do we really need the cost estimator to do anything? I mean, is that sort of duplicative? Yeah. Um, the timing would be 
especially if he's looking not, not to rush for that. I'd rather just put it out on the street and get all the qualifications because everyone's going to qualify the crap out of it. That their number's only good. That's a day of bid. Right. And the next day it's going to go up until right. they order it. I mean, I put those, those clarifications on my own stuff. So, I mean, Doug, Doug, you got something to say? You there? Yeah. Yeah, right. we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Just uh, trying, to, trying to put it together, not overlap or get somebody ahead of the other, you know? I mean, we could get a hard number for Willard. We could have Fry working on drawings for, um, they could they'd have the mechanical package and the electrical package for the two schools. They'd only, they'd only be waiting on the architectural portion and structural comments. <coughs> so that would drive the number up anyway. I mean, it's not like. Well, we get it out the bin, we give them a standard bin to war time. Maybe we can supplement them with those architectural drawings. Yeah, tenders. Numbers. When was the buying all of the equipment up front? Friday, Is that before? <laughs> Put that on hold for now. Yeah. yeah. That was a balloon. Then. Was just oh. a, Doug's trying to find out what to tell Kelsey. Okay. Um, Fryer had 19900 for both Hubbard and Griswold. Could have Yeah. We need and to prove that. And we have the money for that? Um, well, we can use some of the ARPA money, right? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I think we should vote on sending that to the council and we're in agreement. Let's start, let's get that going. I don't think we have a choice. And then while they're starting on that, we can work on the RFP for CM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then tell them to concentrate on Griswold oh. first. And the, you know, no, it, it actually includes uh, developing opinions of probable construction costs. Perfect. And that's uh, 6,800 bucks. Meetings, design coordination, and uh, detailing and the construction cost estimates. Is, is that just an architectural or everything? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think we should take a hard look <laughs> at these to make sure that they have everything we want. Yeah. Um, so how about I, I can send it back out again. Everyone takes another look at them, and we add anything that we think we need to make sure. Because I, I this would, does I, help. The front end yeah. is in here, too. I would, I would vote right now to send that to town council to get that approved and then we'll go through it and if we got to modify it we modify it well i could throw a contingency a heavy contingency on uh on each one yeah because i think if we're pulling out of that ARPA money that would money. seem to be the logical unless there's some other uh you know no there's no caveat that money's a new no not caveat there may be another source of money that uh, we were pulling yeah. stuff from there is there is like there's a design uh like the PBC, but I but I think we should push that forward now to get that design moving. I don't I don't think we should wait any longer. Okay, because by the time we get all the documents together yeah. and get it out to bid, and we get the bid and award window set up, we're probably talking going into summer anyways. Yeah. When we get the numbers back. So I don't know. I think what I should do is at least make this is from July eighth. Um, okay. So make sure that Friar's okay with yeah. the number. Yeah. And then I'll just oh, take a quick look at it and make sure you know i think i know what uh, everybody yeah. wants here so and then do a, a, a agenda item and go to the town council and then work with kevin and on which fund to take it out of and just okay. have it all when you talk to him and ask him ask him how quickly he could get griswold if, if we were to release him how quickly he could do griswold you know, and how okay how quickly he could get griswold and then follow up with how and how I'd ask him for both. Yeah. yeah. Both. Tom Griswold will be the key and then how okay. will be the next. What's the plan to try to put all three to out to bid at once? Well if we do it to if we put it out for one CM, let's say, yeah. I think that would make the most sense. Yeah. Otherwise we chase our tail on one CM. Yeah. So one CM for all three. Yeah. Let's yeah. start well at it then. And then while, while we're doing all this, we could figure out if we get any money from the state for renovation of the schools. You know, they did have, in Willow, they did have interior design details uh, to check the specs. I you might want to ask Fire about uh, giving a cost for, you know, ask 
ask them about what it would take for us to get some reimbursement from the state. Yeah, that's a good idea. And actually, uh, Robert Roach from Fryer was the one that was sending the emails and was talking to them about um, you know HVAC only versus renovation. Yeah. So he's see if you can blend that into. It might be just ADA. Oh, you mean in in the proposal? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. So we at least get a preliminary idea of what we can anticipate to go back to town council with that. And what is the actual program from the state? What is it through the education? Yeah, it's renovation for schools. Okay. So if you're pre existing under the Oh, you know what? I think it's, it was on one, in one of the emails. Yeah. It's some kind of uh, acronym. Okay. We, we knew what it was from the high school. Right. The, the high school, we could have done ADA, but the cost was, by the time the force was crazy. Yeah, it's, it's all crazy form numbers you got to file, file for. It. And they, don't re, they don't reimburse you. By the time we were done, it was just like, okay, well, this is kind of crazy. $24 million, and we're not going to have a, anything new. We're just going to have hands. And we also have stairs and ramps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love our meetings, Mike. Come on, here you go. I worked for a month. Well, I'm not busy doing anything else, guys. So I know. Thank I God. Know. Thank God you break up my day. I'm going to have to call you about my road. My <laughs> road. We're actually going to meet on my street. What, what's the reason? Anything else for Solik? Oh. No. Hey, Doug, thank you. He's actually on, not, not around. He's on vacation or something. Good. Oh, thanks, yeah. thanks, Doug. Yeah. No problem. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We're going to be inspecting every street in the town. Webster Heights. Oh, oh yeah. Ronald, near Ronald Drive in that area? That's right. Oh, yeah. It's over two. We've been, well, I won't get into it now. Now you There's have invoices. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank yes. you. No, we can wait for it. Well, stop being a taskmaster. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Who Wait. wants to go home? It's 8.07. You have two invoices from CES. <laughs> yeah, Tom. <laughs> uh, I have two invoices. First one is for Hubbard, $6,750. And it brings their fee of, uh, to 90%. You want to take them both at the same time? Sure. Okay. Second one is for Griswold, $8,775. And it brings the percenters complete again to 90%. Mike thinks they're above that right now. Make a motion we approve the invoices for CES. Don Lombardo seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go, Elise. Thank you. What else we got on? Election of officers. Election of officers. Should remain the same. I, I second th that. I, I think you should. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm opposed. I think you should I introduce want to offer, the since new. Since I've had two times in the barrel, I've had I'd like to offer to anybody else who would like to put their on their resume the chairman of the TVC. I would like to, but I don't think I show my wife being on this committee. So just tell her to stop. It's all about <laughs> self preservation, huh, Bart? <laughs> I think that's why Fish and Ross invented the Put one in. I'll be vice chairman, but I, I just can't see myself. Well, there's, there's one done, right? Okay. I think Don needs to go. No, I don't. I, need I sh no. You should introduce, introduce the newest member. Don no one's even. You, oh, no. No. Jason. Oh, I didn't know you were, okay. Jason's the newest one. Right. Tom yeah, Reed is the her. chair right now. Okay. <coughs> I'll do it. I, I'm just offering it to anybody. So, in case you had a desire. Say, is there motion? Tom Salamino is chairman. <laughs> Second. All in favor? See if you can uh, hey, hey. 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 <laughs> His reaction time is a little slow. <laughs> I, was well, I was trying to figure out how do you how do you stop a motion? You have to vote it down, don't you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you say to Brian Kiskowski, is there any physical reason you cannot perform that task? <laughs> <laughs> Brian was like, he was a new guy, like you, you just walked in and we hit him. In the chair right out of the box. <laughs> no, don't worry, we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job. Though. He did. Yeah. Gentlemen, is there something I can put in writing? 
Tom, do you want, Tom, you want to be the chairman? I really don't have the time right now to do it. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm doing uh, my volunteer tax uh, yeah, preparation okay. stuff. So I'm just offering in case anybody. Oh, no, any I thank you, Tom. I appreciate the offer. May I not have it till next time? <laughs> <laughs> till next time. All right. And the motion, everything stays the way it is. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you got you got up easy. Yeah. And Oops, Bart, know what to do. Bart <laughs> is vice chair. I make a motion. Don't worry, the people here will be. Second. Aye. Aye. Did you get drafted uh, at this or you volunteered to get drafted? Okay. Asian, I feel better now. No, okay, we're getting ready for stopping, you guys. Okay. Yeah, we get a volunteer. They they move to the like journal. Tom just for some. Take care, Tom. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for Thank keeping you. us on task. Have a good night.